uh, we sent out the text tonight, and we're going to, our subject tonight is um, Thanksgiving. And I, I purpose, purposely did that because this is the month of November, and we're moving into the time that is set aside. And as we have known it from coming up from a child, it's Thanksgiving. And I also added how to be thankful, yet keeping it simple. And I think this is a process that God wants to teach us how to navigate through this season of uh, Thanksgiving and then Christmas. And and it's a, it's really a beautiful time. It's a wonderful time. But at the same time, it can become a stressful time. So what we want to do is to remember the scripture, what he said, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we want to rejoice and be glad in it. And that that even means Thanksgiving time, Christmas time. Even if it seems uh, a stressful time, it's very uh, you know, busy during the time, it, it, the world itself, it puts a lot of demands on us during these times, and sometimes it, it just becomes overwhelming. But we want to learn how to navigate. God wants to teach us how to navigate through it all and stay intact. He wants to teach us how to navigate through it and still be at peace, still be uh, at, 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 at uh, walking in a spirit of tranquility, still being able to function and understanding that although the world say this, but I still understand that this is the day that the Lord has made, and I want to rejoice and be glad in it. And I'm going to read one particular scripture from the book of Romans, the 14th chapter, and the 5th verse. And that scripture says this, One man esteemed one day above another. Another esteemed every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And that is so powerful which means that some may, oh, they go all out of the way. And then somebody say, well, you know what? This Thursday, thanks, it's going to be just like an ordinary day. But he said it doesn't matter. you got to be persuaded in your own mind. In other words, we have to take responsibility of our own life. Now, I may have a family tradition, and it may have been Mama may have did it this way. Auntie may have, you know, did it her way. But now I have to become very responsible for what I can handle, what I can do. So why I got to become responsible for my life, from the way I handle Thanksgiving or how I handle that time, because I know what is best for me. Now what works for me? may not work for you. But at the end of the day, we got to become responsible for our own lifestyle and, our, and the way we can handle and manage things. So with that being said, we want to be thankful, but we want to keep it simple. And how do we keep it simple? Doing what works best for you as an individual. And remembering this, these times that we're living in now, they're a little bit more complex than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Even during that time, 10, 20 years ago, jobs would allow people to take off two or three extra days for uh, Thanksgiving time. But now because of the job system, they've cut back. They Now you got uh, two people doing what five people used to do. So now they are saying, okay, you can't be off like you used to be off. So guess what? Now 
that 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 changes the whole dynamics of your travel or how you're going to spend that day. So what we're saying, you we want God wants to teach us how to do what works for us at the present time. But I wanted to talk also about sometime during the holidays we 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 start missing maybe our loved ones that maybe have is deceased or maybe uh loved ones that cannot travel and sometimes loved ones that are 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 uh are having health issues even sometimes we we can't travel like we used to or maybe it just doesn't work at that particular time so what we want to understand that guess what it's that that's not the only day that you can give thanks it's just the day that society have set aside for us to do it. It doesn't mean that you have to do it when society tell you to. As a matter of fact, Thanksgiving can really be for you tomorrow. You can have a Thanksgiving tomorrow. You create what what works best for you. And I was speaking about allowing uh, understanding the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad in it. Even if that day, if you're missing a loved one, if you're maybe uh, missing a family member, or maybe just say, for example, you can't prepare all the fixing, have all the foods, have everybody at your house, because sometimes things happen. So we don't want to get caught up in how the world say you're supposed to have it. Be creative. Create your own way of doing Thanksgiving. Yes, you know, uh, November and December, even though uh, society has said that it's, for, it's the most wonderful time of the year, a lot of people are depressed during these times. People are uh, all by themselves. People are stressed or buying gifts or don't have gifts for the or don't have the money for to buy gifts for the children, and so people are very depressed at this time. But the key is this: once you learn to love yourself, you will not be as depressed because these holidays were made by man, not God. God wants us to rejoice every day. But man said, this is Thanksgiving. That's when you give thanks. This is Christmas. It's all about giving and giving and giving. Who benefits the most are the businesses. They're the ones that are rejoicing and being happy because they are taking <laughs> all of your they are taking all your money for gifts. You see, that that's why they after Christmas, Thanksgiving, guess what? People running back to carry to to exchange or to carry things back. So even though it may have made these holidays, but keep in mind, God, it is God's intention that you rejoice and be glad every day and not one day or twice, time, two times a year. See, this time people are depressed. People have loved their loved ones. People are single or unmarried or don't have a significant other. But so many, there are so many other reasons why people are depressed. But if you learn to love yourself, Sure, you'll be alone, but guess what? You will find a way to make yourself happy. And 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 Dr. Gregory, what you're saying that happiness again is a choice. Yes, it's uh, happiness is just a decision. You have to make a decision. You got to be become responsible for your own happiness. You know, yes. if we waited for someone else to make us happy. If we don't take responsibility and always wait in on something or somebody else to create uh, what we need to be happy or, or to give us what we want to be happy, you become very vulnerable. And actually, you set yourself up for a great deal of disappointment. Even if I would just take a survey tonight on the conference line, and that's among every one of us. What happened? Why? Why did we feel pain? Why did we suffer pain? Why did we su suffer rejection? Why did we suffer uh, abandonment? 
why why have we suffered uh, the the hurt and the harsh feelings? We suffered all of that because we were expecting someone else to make us feel one way, and because they didn't make us feel the way we expected them to make us feel, guess what? We got wounded. We got hurt. Uh, uh, you know, we got shattered. I mean, I've had big, I mean, just, oh, I was so enthused about it, about an uh, event or something that I thought was going to happen. And I'm telling you, at times I had people to crush me because I, I thought they were the one that was going to make it happen for me. And this is why it's very important that we take responsibility of our own lives, take responsibility of our own happiness. And when we take that responsibility, even if you fail, even if it doesn't turn out good, I'm telling you, you will feel so good because guess what? You just learn from it. You don't have to blame anybody. You don't have to be mad at anybody. At least you stood up and you decided on your own. And, and also, it gives you, I'm sorry. And also your happiness is not tied into stuff or money. Money only buys you comfort and conveniences. A lot of people have a lot of money, but they are not happy. Your happiness comes from within. It's a decision you have to make, and it's a choice. And we don't want to keep waiting for something or somebody to fix it for us, fix this. No, God wants to give us the wisdom how to take time, look what, look, see what we need. And sometimes what I've learned uh, through my life experience, I've learned that sometimes I don't need everything that everybody else needs. You know, you have to know yourself. You know, a lot of people need a lot of this. And then if you start trying to get a lot of this or that, that other people are doing, they say, well, oh, you need this. And then you start getting it. And when you get it, it becomes more of a burden to you than a, a, a blessing to you. So we, God is, wants to teach us, even as we began to uh, prepare for the holiday season, you know, um, start setting our own mind frame, get our, get our thoughts in, 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 in together. Don't wait till it comes. Don't wait till it happens. Uh, and then you, then you get caught unprepared. And, uh, you know, and sometimes we have to spend time thinking about what we can do to make our life easy. Even right now, start thinking about things that you can make uh, simple for the Thanksgiving time. If you're going to be the person that's preparing dinner or you're going to take dinner or whatever, don't wait till the week of Thanksgiving to start grocery shopping. You know, you can kind of start already planning, having a few things already uh, uh, in place. And so what, we're, what you're doing, you're already simplifying it, doing what you can do now early if that's what you want to do, and uh, saying, okay, I'm going to do what I can do now. So when that time comes, you know what, I don't have so much to do. And, you know, when we simplify our life, it helps create the peace and the stability that we need to to move forward, uh, to be able to have a great day. And even when we're talking about Thanksgiving, you know that it comes with being associated with a lot of other family members and sometimes family, and it's just like that, it's okay, and it's okay. Everybody don't always click. It doesn't mean that you don't like a person, but sometimes uh, some get along with each other better and then, you know, some just, you know, we just don't click. But it's okay, and it's all right to be like that. It's okay. It doesn't mean that you, you, you don't like the person. It just means sometimes 
people got different things in common. Again, this is an open forum, open line. So if anyone wants to say something, please uh, go ahead and say also. And I was speaking also about um, family members. And uh, this is one thing that you got to remember also that sometimes people are not always on your level. There you go. They don't always know how to treat people. They don't know how to look. Because most of us, if you've been on this conference call for anywhere within the last uh, six to eight months, we've been talking about learning how to love ourselves. And when we love ourselves, then we can love others and be glad for others. But guess what? Everybody else around you, if they haven't gotten to that point, you got to be a little bit more patient and you got to be a little bit more considerate and help and understand that if they don't treat you quite right, it's really not that they don't love you. It's that they really still dealing with issues of loving themselves because people can only treat you how they feel about themselves. Pastor, I would just like to say this also. See, what we have to do, we have to continue. Once we learn how to love ourselves, we have to socialize with people that we know and we know that knows how to love themselves. And that was empower mm-hmm. us to do even better and, and learn us not to feel bad when our people reject us. And our people have the, the tendency to reject us when they feel like that we is on, see, I'm going to put it like this, when they feel like they is not on the, on the same page we are. They're going to always, because we don't agree with everything they say, they're going to always reject us and feel like we feel like we're more than them. But we have grown away from the situation that we have to just do everything to please them. We have to please ourselves. And once we all learn that, then we can live our life better, knowing that first love is God and then love ourselves. And then we move and we can move our whole life better. That's the way I'm looking at it. So um, I, I think we all got to be on the same level and and, and keep ourselves with people that knowing how to love love each other. You know. Thank you. You know. You know. But you see, in, in, in whether it, whether it be in families or in association, people are jealous and envious of you for no reason. Because that's, that's they see you, because they see you successful, and they are not where you are. They become envious of you. They become jealous of you, and they try to talk about you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Doctor Greg, what I have learned to do, and we got that in all our family and in every organization it is. But what I don't learn how to do, and I just learned it, you know, in the last year, is try to be strong and learn it, just like you say, in Pastor level. We have to love ourselves. Once we love ourselves, we we learn to tune them type of people out in organization, churches, and and even on the on the city council. I don't deal with people that I know that don't have love for God, because they don't have love for God. I know they ain't got love for for themselves or me. So uh, mm-hmm. I just try to stay away from certain people, you know. But I show them love, and the most yes. powerful thing that I see is put action behind the love that I show them. I talk to them and hug them, shake their hand, and keep moving. There you go. And uh, really, uh, as we think about this and we look at it, uh, we look at situations like that. People are really they are threatened by the love because actually, love conquers everything. Even back in the older days, you would hear the old people say, it was love that lifted me. When nothing else could do it, it was love that lifted me. Love is a powerful tool. And we're, talk, we're not talking about the love that you kind of feel, you know, oh, I can feel this. No, that ain't what we're talking about. We're talking about a, a, a level of love that, guess what, I don't have it, but I can become it. And guess what? You cannot destroy love. Love is one of the greatest tools. It's one of the greatest gifts that even, I mean, it's one of the greatest 
are attributes of God, even God so loved the world, because when we say love in that, in, to that next level, you really say it, God. Because guess what? When I began to love myself, and then I can love others as I love myself. So a lot of times uh, when people are, uh, treat, treat you a little different and you can see the reactions of another person, what happens is I understand that actually they don't have a problem with me. <laughs> they really have a problem with loving themselves. And I don't, not that I feel sorry for them, but I, I began to uh, pray for them that, Lord, help them define what I have found. Because even where I'm at now, I haven't always been this, in this place. And I, I've searched for it, but I thank God that I'm here, but I have not always been here. Of and love, I, it brings not only a, a good feeling, but it brings a spirit of peace. And I'm telling you, that peace, it just shines out, and it becomes so powerful that it just creates a great atmosphere. Even sometimes people act a little funny, but you just keep, you just keep, doing what you're doing, and before you know it, they just mellow out it, and they realize, you know what, this is good. I can't break this. This is a good feeling. Can I say something? Sure. sure. Sometimes I find myself, I meet people where they stand, so when they act a little funny towards me, I feel go to them because of who I am, that I, I I like everybody anyway, I can go to them and they not like me and still be pleasant and cordial and still tell them I love them, especially with my family members. Uh, uh, Lam- uh, Lamar, thank you for that because, it uh, you know, about three or four weeks ago as I was just talking and the Lord just brought this to my to my mind, he said this to me. He just said, learn. He said, Deborah, just learn to love people. And I was like, okay. At first, I didn't get it. He said, no, learn to love people. So when he said that to me, it all of a sudden, it clicked what he was telling me. He said, when you learn to love people, that means anybody. When you l- just start Focus it on people. Don't focus on where well, the person got to be like this or the person need to be like this or the person got to be of this race or the person got to be uh, of this status. The person got to be saved. He said, don't think of a person like that. Just learn to love people. It's kind of like this. When you love sweets, <laughs> you don't care whether it's a pie or cake, ice cream, whatever, long as it's sweet. So he was just showing me in general how to just start focusing love, just love people. Because actually when you start really loving people, you're no longer offended. You're no longer offended because even if people start acting uh, or misbehaving or or, or doing things that's not cordial, you know how to just to even – even if you have to step away, you step away with such grace, yeah. with such peace. Because, see, most of that is just trying to break your spirit. And what it's trying to do to try to make you try to uh, uh, cause what you say you have to really not to be what you say you have. In other words, it's like Jesus and Judas. And we all know the story about the, the the twelve disciples and and the, and at the supper in the last at the last supper when Jesus was being was was preparing to be crucified and the disciples he said to the disciples one of you will be the one that betray me and they said well who is it is it I but then Jesus said it's the same one that's dipping in the cup with me and when we think about that. Can you? Can we really sit down? But it's called a power of love that when you can sit down, knowing 
that the person that's sitting with you, dipping in the same cup with you, is, is about to betray you to death. And I think about it so often. Jesus did not treat Judas no different than he treated Peter, John, Mark. He remained the same. And this is the love that God is trying to bring us to. It's not what we've been taught. Because, see, the love that we've been taught by our parents or the love that we've been hearing people talk about, I want us to start saying, I want to go beyond that. I want to step into the, to the next level of love. And that's that love when, guess what, it has nothing to do with anything, can't nothing break it, can't nothing change it. It just is. Because, you know, love is not selective. I give you an example. God does not say, I will only love the Christian and, and I will not love the Muslim or the Hindu or the Confucian or whatsoever. God just, he loves everyone the same. He does he won't say, because you committed a crime or a sin, I will stop loving you. He does not do that. His love remains consistent toward everyone. His love is not selective so that we cannot afford for our love to become selective. I will love you only if you can do this for me. But when once you stop doing it, I stop loving you. That's not love. Uh, Deborah? Yes? Can you hear me? Um, you were talking about Judas betraying Jesus. Um, most of us, well, I'm, I guess I'll speak for myself. I've betrayed myself. I was thinking, I, I've, I've ordered that book that, um, that on CD that Dr. Gregory recommended from Dr. Phil, Self Matters, and it talks yeah. about your, your, it's fabulous. I've, I've only, I'm not, I'm only on the second CD, but it talks about your authentic, authentic self, and, mm-hmm. and I, I, after listening to parts of it, I see how I've betrayed, nobody's betrayed me more than I have myself. So it's a real eye opener. So I highly recommend that book, the the book or the or the CD. Mm-hmm. Being your authentic yeah. self, it teaches you to be your authentic self. Yes, yes. And and mm-hmm. and when we talk about authentic, see, a lot of times we don't even realize we got a fictional self. We are we are a. Uh, 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 what other people done made us or what we done tried to make ourselves. And then there's an authentic part, uh, uh, Deborah. And the authentic Deborah is, you know what? I don't want to go to the Thanksgiving dinner. But the fictional Deborah say, no, you need to go. You got to go. You just go because you know if you don't go, they're expecting you to come. And you might, you know, if you don't go, they're going to be talking about you. So what I do, I just do it because I don't want nobody to say nothing about me. I do it because that's what I want. I want to make sure I satisfy everybody else. And then I go. I don't want to be there no way because really I'm not feeling up to it. But I just got to go. But the authentic me says this, you know what, you all, I would love to be there. But today I'm just not feeling good and I'm going to stay at home and I'm going to relax and I'm going to get me some rest. And then I rest and enjoy my day and I'm okay. But the effect of the uh, the the uh, fictional me, if I did that, the fictional me, now I gotta beat myself up. Now I, you know what? I know they gonna be mad at me. Uh, I gotta put on a, a on my little fake smile. No, we're we're walking into the authentic. In other words, that's the authentic love. Because guess what? The people that love me for real, they gonna understand. They're going to say, girl, it's okay. You're going to get your rest. You know, we would love for you to be, as a matter of fact, we're going to have somebody to bring you dinner. That's what real love does. And and the guilt from not being the proper, quotation, proper grandmother is like, I don't want to, my authentic self does not want to be on a soccer field or whatever. And then after, 
I can do other things to be a good grandmother, but I don't have to sell myself and feel guilty the rest of my life because I don't want to do certain things that my grandchildren are doing. And you know what? And once you voice voice those concerns out, they will love you better because you are being real. You are not trying to fake it. And the and the key to also to to that, and even to all of our lives, even though you can't do this because that's what they say you ought to be doing, but there are so many other ways that you can contribute that will just be so helpful. Like I said, everything ain't for everybody. Exactly. <laughs> so when we learn that it's okay for me but not you know. to be the kind of to be the same pastor, the same kind of pastor everybody else is being. And I'm telling you, I went through some tremendous uh, 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 emotional changes when God started breaking me away from the traditional pastoral way of doing things. I had to change the way I, I ministered. I changed the way I thought about ministry. I changed the way I was preaching. I, I was the what they call it, the hooper, the holler, just a hooping and a hollering, and God is took that, he said, no more of that. And I'm like, what? But you know what? And I, when, when it, at the end of the day, when I thought about all of that, it was really, I was doing that based on what other people thought I should be doing. And never took the time to ask God, Lord, what kind of pastor would you like for me to be? It was a learned behavior. I was taught it that way. I did it that way, and I did it good. And now I got to pull away from all of that, and the people that enjoyed it, now they don't want to hear me because I ain't doing it like that no more. But guess what? It doesn't matter. I'm now I'm in, I'm in a zone. I feel good about what God has called me to do. It's about helping people to understand that lo- that we can no longer be in the earth talking about going to heaven. It's about us bringing the heavens to the earth. When I say bringing heaven to the earth, there, God wants to give you the wisdom how to live in a complex world, but yet be happy, be at peace, and be and keep life simple because life is simple. We got to stop complicating it. And as we approach the holiday season, I heard Dr. Gregory say, the song is out. This is the most wonderful time of the year. But then again, is it the most wonderful time of the year? For whatever reason, people are more depressed. People are, 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 are they're having a lot of anxiety. They have a lot of uh, financial struggles. I mean, a lot of time. I don't know what about this time. It just brings on a whole lot of uh, emotional drama. But if it's supposed to be the most happiest time of the year, why why they don't cut the price of the airline tickets? Let the mm-hmm. air people let people fly at half price. Cut down on on even with the with the with the food bring the price down, bring the gas down. I mean, make it help let society make it to be a happy time of the year. But most of the time it's the most expensive time of the year. Mm. But that's how the world wants us to see it. And we we cannot buy into all of that. Just create what works best for you. As I was reading earlier in the in that chapter of Romans, the fourteenth chapter in the fifth verse, and then you can continue to read it read it a little further. But one person will say, This is a special day and maybe there's another person say, You know what? This is just like another day. Either way it go, do what is best for you. And when and you do that, me- love yourself, enjoy yourself, and you're gonna be okay. And we are not 
telling you not to enjoy or celebrate Thanksgiving or Christmas. That's not what we are saying. All we are saying is this. Know your limits. Know what you can afford. Know what you cannot afford. Do not go overboard just for one day. Do not be going to a lot of debt just for one day. Know your strength. Know what you can afford. I mean, like, oh, they have Black Friday. The day after Thanksgiving, people are spending the night or in the cold just for some television. If that's what if that's what they want to do, more power to them. But I ain't doing it. You see, so try to understand the goal is for you to be happy. And that's do right. What, do what makes you happy and try to be authentic. If you kind of say, no, I can't come to this party, no, I wouldn't be Say it. Be free to say it. Be free to say it. Just speak up your mind. But say it. Watch your tone of voice when you say it. And and we don't have to explain ourselves to everything we do. We we can just say, I can't go. I am so tired of everybody giving excuses and me giving. I just started saying, no, sorry, I can't. I mean, if I need exactly. to give a simple one, but not all, nobody wants to hear all that. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I'm so glad you brought that up, uh, uh, Betty, because we got to learn how to, we don't, you don't have to explain everything. You know, and, and sometimes we add more stuff because we're feeling guilty that's what that's why we do all of that because we start feeling guilty and we feel like we owe somebody no you don't and um again put a smile on your face and know from your heart that you know what i have no bad motives about what i'm saying and say it and just keep going and that's god taught me that he said long as your motives are pure when your motives are pure, you can just sail with the wind. And I want to encourage every one of us on the line tonight, just know that you, your motives are pure. And when your motives are pure, God have accepted you. And guess what? You are free. And don't feel like, oh, I, I, I owe somebody. or oh, I got to do this for somebody because they did that for me. No. As Dr. Greg would say, know your limits. It's your responsibility to create a happy Thanksgiving. And when people start texting you and say, happy Thanksgiving, now you can say, I know how to be happy on Thanksgiving. When they text you and say, Merry Christmas, guess what? It ain't just another word any longer. Oh, my God. I am living a Merry Christmas for real. So because we don't want to keep saying stuff. We say it happy. We say it happy. But most of the people, they're not even happy. They don't even know what that means. But guess what? Is God beginning to help us to be more conscious? Again, I want to bring that word up again. More conscious, more aware of what we're doing. And what we're culture. saying, why we're doing it, I'm telling you, you're going to have a not just a happy Thanksgiving, you're going to have a happy life. There you go. Um, my sister's son had, had a grandchild, and usually I give like 50 bucks or whatever, and I, and I just don't have the 50 bucks to give. So I, get, I bought $20 worth of little books, and, I, and it doesn't matter whether they – not happy with the gift or whatever, I'm happy with with my gift. There you go. Yes. And then my girlfriend is get just got engaged, and I want to give her a shower, and I can't afford one of the showers I would have done in the past, but I can go to the dollar store and get a lot of decorations and get creative and go to Costco and get things, and I can still give her a lovely shower mm-hmm. without spending all of that money that I would have done in the past. Yeah. There you go. And feel good about it and and and, yes. and and be my authentic self and it feels really good because that's what I want to do. It doesn't matter what anybody else 
things. There you go. That, if it's not that, the way it should be or supposed to be or yeah. you didn't spend this yes. much money or you didn't do this or it, it's got to be, we got to change it to what feels Amen. authentic. Amen. And guess said. what happened? No. Go ahead, doctor. No, that, that's what I said. Know your limits. Know what you can afford and know what you can add afford. And don't try to go overboard just to please somebody while hurting yourself. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't. And I wanted to plug in what she's saying. What it does, it gives you a sense of power and freedom. See, we're yeah. trying to free ourselves from what they said. Because mm. <laughs> that's most of our whole life. We'd be saying, well, you know, they said you're supposed to have, I I heard, or they say you're supposed to have dressing with the turkey, or you're supposed to have cranberry sauce. They said, but guess what? It, it don't matter. I got to get away from the they said. And I got to say, who is they? I don't know who they are. <laughs> It, I believe it's it's the voices in my head, that, the voices that keep telling me, even when I want to do it my way, it's the base saying in my head, and I got to eliminate all this stuff out of my head and start living out of my heart. Because when I live out of my heart, it flows and it feels good and it it liberates me from 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 feeling. Are obligated to something or somebody, but I'm feeling good, and I I know that God is honoring me. I'm at peace with myself, peace with God, and now I can be with at peace with man, and it's a wonderful place to be. And I don't have to just be this way on one day. I don't have to be this way just because I'm in church and I'm feeling the spirit of the Lord moving. I can be this way every day of my life and everywhere I go. And it's a it's now I'm learning how to walk in dominion. Okay, Dr. Gregory, uh I'm going to sh- give it to you now. Again, a uh, as the holiday season approaches, we pray to God that you got something from this to remove the stress from your life the depression from your life, be real to yourself, learn to love yourself, value yourself, appreciate yourself, and just and, and keep on living. And be Amen. Happy. And I want to uh, read something Deborah told me to read. Um, you relax on a plane even though you don't know the pilot. You relax in a ship even though you don't know the captain. You relax on a bus even though you don't know the driver, why don't you relax in life knowing that God is in control? All right. Oh, now, all that's right, right. right. <laughs> Amen. Yes, yeah, that's powerful. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, God. just relax and enjoy it. And just enjoy the journey. And we all on that journey. But we got to learn to relax. We got too much stuff going on on this journey. Eliminate the things that is it, it that does not serve us serve a purpose in your life. And that means sometimes you got to eliminate some people. Sometimes you got to eliminate some things. Sometimes you got to eliminate a lot of uh, just unnecessary stuff. But all of us got to take a look deeper, become more conscious. You know, the Lord told me, don't be focused, but be conscious. And I at first I didn't get it. Being focused he said, that's what's on the outside. But when you be more conscious, you're looking inside of yourself. So I want to encourage you, be more conscious and more aware of what's going on with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Amen. Look, at, look at, go ahead, look at your life and see where you want to be. Are, you satisfied, with, are you satisfied where you are? Or, or, do, or do you want more for yourself? Do you want to be more happier? That's your choice. It's a decision that you can make. I can't make it. The pastor can't make it. No one can make that for you but yourself. And find things that make you happy and not others happy. 
Learn to love yourself. I can have stress with that. But learn, because the only way you can love me is when you learn to love yourself. Amen. Amen. And I invite Amen. everybody to go to YouTube if you want to hear any of the past Wednesday night um, sessions. Or this, this one will be up. This was such a good one. It will be up in a few days this, this week. Pastor okay. Deborah's Choir. On YouTube, okay. thank you too. And, and yeah. I say thank you, thank you, thank you for your wisdom, for your for your sincerity, for your friendship, for your love for us. Because because of you, people can hear her message or messages on YouTube. So I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, well, it's my pleasure because it's my gift because I get to hear it again and um <laughs> and and get the message again. So it's a gift to me. Okay. Well, we thank you, Betty, for letting God use you and, and take the talent that you have so we all can enjoy it. Thank you, King. Yes. Yes. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Okay. If, 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 before we get off the line, if anyone wants to say something to the newcomers, welcome. And if you, if you want to introduce yourself and say something, please feel free at this time. Hello, Cousin Lane. This is Kat. Hi, Cousin Catherine. How are you? I'm doing fine, and I've been enjoying the message. Thank you so much. God bless you. You too, and Gregory too. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And I would just like to say, Dr. Gregory and Deborah, I'm ready to eat, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you, all right, James. <laughs> hey, I was telling the only house I know that you can go and eat every nationality of food and really enjoy it, then bring some home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that sounds great. We'll be in touch. <laughs> okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, James, do you mind closing, doing the closing prayer unless there's someone else would like to share? Mm-hmm. Okay. Father God, we thank you once again for this great message here tonight. Yes. Father, I ask you to continue to enrich in all of our hearts so we get a spiritual guide and you and you come through your son, Jesus Christ, with the things that we discuss, make us better leaders in our community and make us understand how to love ourselves and not be selfish with it and build better relationships in our home and on our job wherever we go. Father, I just, I just want to thank you. I missed some 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 uh, classes, but I thank you tonight, and I thank my cousin here with me, you know, and I thank you. We were just touching each other from the great message we were, we were receiving, how to love ourselves, because there's so many of us. We, we we don't know how to love ourselves. Now, I think tonight, we all going to have a different attitude of how to love ourselves and put action in when we love in someone else. Just like Betty was saying, how she used her love, you know, go to the person, you know, and talk to, you know. And so it was a great lesson. And I ask God to continue to let us build this riches in learning and getting wisdom from these lessons. I ask him to bless this prayer in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody, Amen. and you, God, be blessed and love Amen. you guys. Amen. And, 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 and our, and our <laughs> love is authentic. Our love is authentic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I yeah. love you guys. I love you. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Be blessed. Oh, wow. Thank you, Lord.